excuses and say, well, I'm sorry, I was waiting for you to throw down a lightning bolt and say to me, in, in your words, my name, stand up, stop being a victim, be accountable and restore my law, restore the law as it should be and get rid of and throw out and banish these moneylenders and these bankers that have disgraced the law because that's exactly what they've done. And that is what Eucadia is about, holy and solely, restoring the law. Now, in doing that, it's not an easy process because they have corrupted it over nearly 500 years. So we, we need to restore the canons, the principles of law. Who wrote those? Well, they're in the Bible. They're in the Quran. They're in the laws of Hammurabi. They're in the laws of Akhenaten and the laws of Moses. They're in the laws of civilizations from Asia and South America and the Pacific right across. And if you don't believe, then you need to read. They're there. That is the purpose of the canons. The canons are to, fa to, to restore the foundation of law so that one may read them instead of reading mountains and mountains of rubbish and propaganda in the jurisprudence and the system that trains intelligent, ideal young men and women who they themselves believe they can help be part of restoring the law, who then go and study law only to be lied to, utterly lied to, so the canons are our foundation, our hope, and they're for you, for all of us. And from the foundations of the canons, we have the covenants. The covenants are the deed and conveyance because none of us own property. We all are stewards of this earth. None of us own anything. The only, only force that owns anything is the divine. And Rome understood that. So the covenants are about conveying and reconveying the property lawfully, legally, based on the dishonour, the insanity, the cowardice, the stupidity, and the extraordinary inability for those that want to be in power to act as responsible stewards. You know, most of us would be perfectly happy, if we think about it, having responsible people perform their duties as stewards. I don't think most people want to be a president or a prime minister or a leader. I certainly don't want to be, and I never will be. But if you want to stand up and say that I am the steward of America or Canada or Australia or Singapore or Mexico or Germany or any country in the world, then that entails certain responsibilities. And these people have been using media and psychology and misinformation and just flat out lies to excuse their utter incompetence. Well, it's time <clears throat> to reconvey what is rightfully ours to us so that no longer can any small group in the world claim to own, claim to hold the property, claim to, you, to, to hold us at ransom, which they have done and which they plan still to do in their insane plans this year in utterly rendering the world's currencies worthless and thus placing us into a state of extreme distress by which they will reintroduce their beloved gold and hope to regain control without any of their covenants anymore. A, a group of people now that believe in nothing will try once more to gain control. And those that support them, who, if they did not support them, could not possibly do what they're about to do. The Chavez Goy, the loyal idiots, that support these people are still enforcing the plan because, as they said in World War II, we are only following orders. Cowards, idiots, incompetence. We are only following orders, and the madness goes on. 
We are here for the law, and that is what we're here for. Okay. Taking responsibility. The goal as we roll forward in these deeds of conveyance, which go from the covenant of one heaven, and there are uh, nine um, structures of conveyance, and this relates to the conveyance of land. So starting with the covenant of one heaven, we convey to the globe union and we convey to the faiths. From the covenants of the faiths, we convey and globe, globe union, we convey down to regionals. America's Union, Oceanic Union, Asia Union. From the regions, we convey down to the nations, the trusts at a national level. From the trusts at a national level, we can convey down to the states, the provinces. For the provinces, we convey down to the councils. From the councils, we convey down to the smaller um, uh, regions, such as allotments, towns. And then we convey down to the lots where a man or woman proving that they have purchased the land may have title issued that cannot be challenged by the Roman cult. Now, in describing that system, one of the first questions and obvious questions one may ask is, this is a system of legal and equitable title. What about the issue of rent and ownership? You know, what, why would I want to have a system that seems to be just a improvement, albeit the same in, in claim, to the Roman system? Well, it's not the same. But remember I said that no one owns anything. And if you were to be granted absolute ownership of land, which was a system that exists before they invented this concept, then you are back to the old days where people will fight to the death on claiming something that ultimately they can never own. So it's about learning. And what the deeds and trusts will allow us to do is convey the rights down of legal and equitable title to you and to ensure that no one may charge rent. No one may charge rent until the level of the council and the community. Why? Because unless one is stewarding in the community at that level, no one has the right to charge rent. No one. And so we retain the value of the community, we restore title, and we restore the rightful ownership of the land. Now, we'll talk about this more in, in, as we go forward, and it is extremely important and all of you have the right to participate in this because at the end of the day, when these deeds of trust are conveyed, they are conveyed to you and your responsibility to make it happen, not me. The spiritual members in accepting and adopting the role of trustees in the lawful execution of these deeds will stay in place until such time that men and women competently come together at a state level at a provincial level and take these deeds which are also charters and ensure that they can have elected a representation that can ensure the true de jure, the original intention of our states and provinces are restored. Now if it takes two years, it takes two years. If it can happen in a few months or weeks, it will happen in a few months or weeks. But it will be up to each and every one of you to decide and choose. Not for me. I will have nothing, and no, sorry, I'll have no part at all in, in how people are coming together or in matters of disputes. It will be in the deeds and the charters themselves and between you all to make this happen. And I am hoping that these deeds and charters will be in your hands no later than March the 14th. That is the goal. And when that happens, there will not be any more work by me in terms of the deeds and trusts 
it will be up to you to form and come together to make those communities work. Now then, after that, my goal is to uh, remove my support, to firstly have the canons, all 22 books completed, no later than July the 1st. And once that happens, then I will have no part to play anymore in any corrections or any uh, work that needs to be done in making sure the canons are as, as accurate a foundation of law as has ever been conceived. And then in terms of the 33 codes of law, whether it be education, health, transport, fitness, uh, finance, the procedures and forms that any society needs to rally and, and succeed, my role in those will end on December the 21st. And in terms of supporting the communities in allowing them to come together and form their currencies and form ways of bartering and form ways of retaining wealth and having that wealth no longer stolen by institutions like the IRS, then the network of the Supreme Financial System and the Reserve Banks will be put in place and competent people will be appointed. And by December the 21st, I will have no role to play whatsoever in any of that. So that by December the 21st, 2011, the day of judgment, the day by which the conveyance of deeds and trusts will be lawful, because on that day, the mountain of dishonour, based on the incompetence, cowardice, stupidity, of the people that are supporting the parasites, the powers that be, in continuing and still trying to destroy, on that day, a judgment will be rendered. And on that day, everything that has been put in place will be lawful in accordance with all the prophecy and all the covenants. And it will then be up to each and every one of you and those that come to make it work, not me. So when anyone says to you in some flippant way or some arrogant way or some ignorant and stupid way that this is some kind of cult, it is not a cult. It is about taking responsibility. It's not about a Messiah. Franco Collins is just a man. It is about each and every one of you taking responsibility. And when people make flippant comments and still act as a victim, that is not taking responsibility. And when people ignorantly say things without reading, that is not taking responsibility. And when people say, I'm happy being a slave, that is not taking responsibility. And when people don't care what happens to their neighbour, that is not taking responsibility. Taking responsibility is realising that 40 of us have the ability to build homes. 20 of us have the ability to sustain each other's livelihood. 100 of us have the ability to reinvigorate our community. 1,000 of us have the ability to change the world. A million of us have the ability to never let these people do what they've done ever again. But I cannot do that, and I will not do that. And in fact, my role becomes more and more of an impediment as the weeks progress. So, in light and honour of what each of us need, my role finishes and I become like you, a, uh, a, a consumer, uh, a helper, but I will have nothing to do with you, Kader. I will have no claim of ownership and I will certainly not be someone that uh, anyone can come to and ask questions because I have no right from that day. Well, seeing though I've been ranting a bit about insanity, but let's just talk about this issue of insanity as mental illness and not evil. Because I think it's important. Because we are going to face this year a lot of change, change that we're part of and change that we're not part of. And there is a telltale sign of extreme insanity. And it encapsulates itself in the following kind of logic. If I can't be part of this, then I will blow it all up. If you won't pay attention to me, then I will go out there and destroy you. If 